Like, in this film alone, he got shot by this high-pressure water cannon down this massive water slide. Shit, like, his eyeball came out. It was, it was not okay. <laughs> it's ter it's, seriously, just boop. Straight out. When you say his eyeball came out. No, I mean... Do you mean, like, meta metaphorically, out, like he was, was so surprised his eyeballs... No, no, his eyeball was hanging on his cheek. Welcome back people to the Table Read podcast. Hope you're well, hope you're happy, hope you're smiling. Um, the person next to me is always smiling <laughs> and that's why I love her. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, um, you're pretty much a superstar. You're probably going to hate me saying that. I know, I know, but it's just fact. You're pretty much a superstar. The wonderful, good friend of mine, Miss Ellie Worthington Cox. Hi. <laughs> How are you, I'm so young lady? good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for having me. I know, I complete. I, we, we talked about this before, but I just remembered where I ended asking you to travel <laughs> all the way from. Um, yeah. Man, my, I've spent literally my entire life traveling. Okay. Like, I live on trains. This is <laughs> this is the problem with being a child actor who lives up north. Okay. All of a sudden being thrown into London. Okay. Life. It makes me like... feel much less guilty <laughs> knowing that. How long I've known you for? Oh my god, this is <gasps> always fries my brain. Surely it's like over a decade now, right? It might be. When was? So yeah, me and Ellie met on a show called Bugsy Malone at the Lyric Hammersmith. No, we go back before that. Didn't no, we? we actually do. We do. <laughs> it was Matilda. We right? actually do. Yeah. Oh, I don't even want to get into that don't then. That's even, that's that's. Don't even, I feel old. That's ages. I feel old. That's ages. <laughs> it probably is over a decade. You're right. To be fair, oh, yeah. we're not going to get into that. We've known each other for a long time. Well, <laughs> we've known each other for a long, long time. Long time. Very, very, very long time. <laughs> um, oh. I know you. I feel like I know you. It's. I. I probably said this over and over again in this podcast. I know the people that I'm interviewing, but I never really know from like before I've met them. So like I know everything from when I've met you onwards. Um, but like, first question is the very beginning. You are a very, 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 very talented actor. I don't care, I'm gonna keep saying it. Very, it's, un it's actually unreal at some time. You're a very, very, very talented actor. So I wanna know, where did it all start? Oh my God, so I think it's always been in me. You know, you know when you can just kind of tell with some people like, oh, they're going to grow up to do that, aren't they? Like, when I was a kid, I was just one of those really unruly ones where it was like, you know what I'm going to do with this child? I'm going to put her in an acting class. <laughs> I'm going to put her in a singing lesson. I'm going to put her in for dance because this is too much energy. That's actually how I started actually. <laughs> Not going to lie. Like, it's, it's daycare. Yeah. It's, you know, nurturing, you know? Mm. So yeah, I got, you know, just like after school lessons, quickly figured out that I loved it. And then it was all just kind of a happy accident because I saw Matilda the Musical when it was in Stratford, like when they were doing previews. That's early, yeah. Okay. Early, early, yeah. early, yeah. So I would have been, what, nine? And I was like, I didn't know kids could do this. <laughs> I didn't know who's allowing their children on this stage. Like, this is so amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, I said to my brother, I was like, I want to do that. Mm. And he was like, okay, you think you can do that? <laughs> sure, Ken. Yeah, yeah no, right. Yeah. yeah, right. And then as a joke, like literally as a joke, he wasn't even being like, oh, you know, let's see if you can do it. He was like, this will put a down to earth. Like he put me in for the open auditions. Oh, really? For the West End. Wow. And he was like, let's see how she likes it now. 11 auditions later, they were like, yeah, can you move to London in three days? So, rewind <laughs> about 10 seconds. How many auditions? 11. 11 and I was like 9 10 what <laughs> and what but I don't want that was normal and I've had one audition and it the most I had was to do seven and I thought mm. that was excessive yeah 11 auditions 11. for a nine-year-old I genuinely thought that was the norm and then the next role I got it was just one and I was like it's usually like hated like me. <laughs> three or four max right 11 auditions 11 I was up and down on the train for like a couple of months but it was Eleven. That is really I know. Why? I just thought that was normal, and all the other kids are like, "You're back again," and I was like, <laughs> You're "Is back. that a bad thing?" Like, I don't. Oh god, but yeah, crazy stuff. They really wow. put you through their paces the entire show. You know. So you would, when you would, if you don't know, they probably do know this. <laughs> You're one of the original Matildas. 
the OGs. <laughs> the OGs. BAFTA Award. No, Olivier, Olivier Award winning. One. Even better, if I'm oh, being wow. honest. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, no. No, it was... It was just so much fun. Mm. Like... It was just so crazy to think that at the time I was just like, oh my God, this is so much fun. And I'm just with like a load of other kids and we're singing and dancing and people clap at the end of it. And then you grow up and it's like, I was the youngest Olivier Award winner in history. And that only hits when you're older and it's like, you're using it as a bookshelf. Like, this just holds my books up, you know? (laughs) Wait a minute. I had to move it out of my bathroom. Sorry, Ellie, again, one more time. (laughs) Rewind 20 seconds. You're using, you're the youngest. Say it one more time. Just so, just, in, ca- just in case you missed what <laughs> Wait, she just said. Let me get my full time. You're the what? <laughs> you're the what? The youngest Olivier Award winner in history. And you're using your award to do what? Sorry. I, I hold my books up. <laughs> Look, my nan forced me to move it out my bathroom. Like, she came <laughs> out. <laughs> I put it in my bathroom because I was Why like, was it I just saw it the least in there. So I was like, Why oh, yeah, I'll stick your it there. I don't. No. I would buy a whole shelf just for that <laughs> one award. Why was it in your bathroom? No, I, I, I don't know. I think I read somewhere that some celebrity had like a bathroom where they had like awards in there. I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. So I just had it. You can tell I've never won an award before because <laughs> to me, putting an award in your bathroom Stop. is a bit mad. It was too But I haven't won one, so it I wouldn't. It makes I wouldn't no know. sense, but it did to me at the time. Fair enough. And then I had like family and friends come over and be like, what are you doing? You need to... So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll use it as a book holder. That's fine. I'll... Oh, oh, my God. God. I know. It's bad. I need to start well, taking yeah. more pride in these things. But it doesn't feel real, does it? You know? It's but like... I was literally about to say, that, like, like we just said, that was a while ago. Mm. So at the moment, when we look at it now, as growing up or whatever, we're like, you were nine years old, yeah. performing in front of how many people um, almost every night rehearsing for i'm not gonna get into the hours we had to rehearse and we was in those kind of shows um <laughs> nope. being the youngest uh, ever to win an olivia award like when we talk about it now yeah. it's mad yeah it's not but as a kid you're not really yeah, you've just got bundles of energy you yeah know? like we were just we were like the duracell bunny just like bouncing off the walls if i had to do that as an adult i would be on my knees you'd crash yeah three. you'd crash you'd burn <laughs> like, out whoa but yeah i mean well saying that i'm I'm potentially doing theatre again this year. Oh. So, so, <laughs> oh. so it's like, oh. So, yes. quick, before we transition into the next element of it, mm-hmm. you've been a theatre actor and you've been a TV and film actor. Mm. And it's always, it's a very common question that I honestly, I can answer it, but it changes every single time I, I step on set, I'm not going to lie. Mm. Would, you prefer you, would you say you had a preference between TV, film and theatre? God, it's, it's literally like, asking a mother to pick her favorite child do you know what i mean it's, it's not an easy question so hard because i've thought about this so much over the years and i guess i guess it just depends on what you want to focus on more because they're so different mm. like even tv and film i just feel like they're totally different crafts whereas a lot of the time people just kind of ban them into screen work yeah and then theater's just a whole different ball game like i hadn't even auditioned for theater in a really long time and you know I, I went for this audition the other week and i was like oh my god this is a whole part of my of my craft that i haven't like explored mm. in such a long time like not as an adult anyway and then tv and film i think because i've been doing a series since i was 14 and like i'm kind of so used to that environment now i think at the moment I'm kind of in love with theatre a bit more. Okay. Which is which is rare for me because okay. usually I'd be like TV and film straight away. Okay. It's it's weird. I hate that. So yeah, into our little next segment. I don't even know where to start. Mm. I don't where do oh, I <laughs> where do I start with this? Oh my god. Um, oh, here we go. Deep breaths. Okay, I know where to start. Okay. You've done so much, Ellie. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Oh my god. Sorry. Okay, to start. <laughs> We're going to start with, a f- I remember when you, you, you announced you were doing this film, Action Point, and I remember the scene Johnny Knoxville. At first I was like, that is crazy, she's, you know, filming with, doing a movie with that one of, not, I say hero, hero for all the wrong oh, reasons. Yeah. He, made, he made me a really mischievous kid back in the day. Also at the same time I was like, I hope she's okay. <laughs> because I've heard stories when they film Jackass, as oh, yeah. you've seen the movies, you can, you can imagine what it's like behind the scenes. So I was like, I hope she's alright. Like, is she okay? 
Because that is a bit of a oh. mad project to be involved in if you're not. <laughs> if you're not careful. You know what I mean? No, it's. You were right to be concerned because that was <laughs> wild. I mean, so I was what? Uh, I would have been 15. And the film was really different at first. Mm. And we kind of. I did a couple of auditions, I did a chemistry read with Johnny. And he was immediately just like, yeah, let's do this. Like, this is great. Um, And then they told me that we were filming in South Africa. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I get to travel. And then I was like, there are also very little health and safety regulations (laughs) over there. So I was like, this makes sense. Because the whole thing's set in California. And originally it was going to be like, yeah, we're going to be shooting in LA. And then they were like, we won't be able to do half the stuff. Which to oh, do. that's why they had to go to South Africa. Yeah. Wow. They built an entire theme park there, and on our days off, they'd just be like, "Hey, so the guy who's providing all the massive wild animals for the film has like this farm. Do you want to go pet a cheetah?" No, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm alright, thanks. I prefer not to pet a cheetah. I'll pet a lion. Uh, you're... I'm. <laughs> that's... I lit- I don't know what's wrong with me. I went in an enclosure with a lion, and I was like, "This is fine." If Johnny can get hit by a bull and shot out of a human cannon... <laughs> That's a good way to think about it. You can, <laughs> you can pet a lion. You can pet a for five seconds if this guy can... I can adult. He, yeah. What has he done it? Like, I'm oh, trying to go back to man. my... Man, he's just... I can't think of something that he hasn't done. I'm about honest. to say, what hasn't he done, honestly? Like, in this film alone, he got shot by this high-pressure water cannon down this massive <laughs> water slide. Chick, like, his eyeball came out. It was... It was not okay. <laughs> It's ter- it's, seriously, just boop, straight out. When you say his eyeball came out, no, I mean. Do you mean like it came, meta- metaphorically? Oh, like it he was, was so surprised his eyeball. No, no, his eyeball, eyeball was physically. hanging on his cheek. <laughs> so that was a trip to the hospital. The hospital? You didn't even want the hospital. <laughs> it's your like what? Yeah, they just boop. so. Cause it's like on a little. I, I assume. I, I, I assume they had to delay filming. <laughs> yeah, he literally like so he hit his head and it just kind of went pop, and so they just. Bro. I know. I know. <laughs> that was one of his minor injuries as well. I'm not even kidding. Like, oh my god. He's hardcore. He just gets back up again. He was knocked out flat for like. It would have been a good ten minutes at one point, and everybody was just stood around him like. What do we do? And he just got up and walked it off. He literally got up and walked away. I wouldn't be able to do that. I would be terrified. Not for my safety, for him. I'd be like, yeah. anything he does, I'd be like, bro, please. Uh, like, please, and, just and be the careful. the craziest thing is, he seems like the world's biggest mental daredevil. And he mm. is the most perfect gentleman. Like, I have never met anyone with more impeccable manners, kindness, like, genuine like he's just such a lovely guy like i genuinely cannot rave about this guy enough. Oh, i love that just like because i was playing his daughter as well he was like right okay come on we're going out for lunch we're having daddy daughter bonding time <laughs> he, he tried to teach me how to drive in an abandoned parking lot oh, Jesus can you imagine Johnny. he was like you want to see how to do a fishtail spin i was like yeah let's go <laughs> just, it was, it was oh, crazy. I lo- I've never met him, but I love him already. Right? I love him. I, I mean, I literally, I met him the once and I was like, yeah, this is going to be fun. Oh, and geez. then, yeah, just straight off to South Africa with him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, woo. Then on to your next project that oh, I'm hoping was a lot yeah. safer oh, to, my- <laughs> to film. <laughs> Depends, to film. actually. Oh, God, Depends. <laughs> Johnny kept me safe on action point and it's the others you have to worry about. <laughs> the stunts and stuff. I'm not even kidding. So, the Sky series Britannia. Um, <laughs> to the people that don't know, that haven't watched the show, um, yeah, like, tell them what it's about, the character yeah. you play. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yours. Yours. So, um, Britannia is set in 43 AD and it's about the Roman invasion of Britain. And it is not historically accurate oh. in the sense that <laughs> okay. we have just added a load of stuff in. Like, oh, okay. But there's so much in that period of history where it's like, we literally do not know what was going on. True. Um, Druids were kind of ruling the land. That was kind of the religion at the time. And then you have the Romans coming in with their ideas of religion as well. And then Christianity was on the rise. So you've basically just got like these warring clashing religions and beliefs 
and also there's like a lot of dark magic running through the series but hey it's uh it's good stuff it gets wild and to make things even more complicated there is a prophecy with my character and i'm i'm the chosen one oh <laughs> I go. don't. She's not taking any of it though. She, okay. Kate is like, no, I'm I'm a salt farmer's daughter. I don't want none of your prophecy. And in this last season, we've just done so series three. She uh, she's finally kind of coming to terms with things, and she goes a little badass. So oh. yeah, <laughs> oh, I got a suit of armor and everything. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's all good stuff. So you mentioned you said forty three AD. Mm. So. I feel like, well, this is just me. I remember every single time I'll get an audition or a script, mm. the first thing I'll look at is when it's set or yeah. where it's based. And I'll kind of get like a, I'll be like, okay, cool, it's, it's based in 2020. Totally. I see these fine. Based in the 90s. Oh, my favorite period it's of time. It's perfect. Great. Yeah. It's based in the 60s. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. so when you saw 40, 43 <laughs> AD. I was like, oh, great. Yeah. Like, how do I research this? You know? That's my problem. I was about to say, how do you even like, Okay. Was there any, re- did they give you any sort of like resources? Or- it's interesting because when I actually went for the audition, it was with a casting director I knew and really liked. And he goes, oh, it's just, it's a tiny little role, but I just think you'll be great for yeah. it. And I was basically supposed to be the lead's little sister who died in like the first episode or something. And then I come back as a ghost girl to be like, you shall prosper. Or just like, <laughs> that was um, it. Can I, a message to the Sky Commissioners. Can we please have a scene of Ellie just doing that? Woo! I'll send that one clip to you. And I want to watch the next series that's, of Britannia. If she's not doing it. that, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I don't see her going, you shall prosper you in shall one prosper. scene, I'm going to be very upset. You see she can do it. So that's just get, it. Just get Listen, in there. Like, <laughs> Sky, get me back. Like, <laughs> no, it was, I mean, it was, it was interesting. Let's just say it was an interesting role. And then... They sent me out to Prague to shoot, and I was like, this is great. You know, it's just a couple of days work. This is gonna be great. And um, while I was there, I noticed that the production office, they wanted me to come in quite a lot. Mm. Like they kept asking me to come in and meet the producer, meet the lead director, and I was like, oh my God, this is great. Um, Why are they bothering with me so much? (laughs) Like I don't understand. And I noticed that everybody was like really panicky and there were like people running around the office dropping papers. And I was like, what's going on? Do you mind me asking? And they were like, um, so uh, the writer is no longer with us. Like we've had to go in a different direction. I was like, okay. And we've got two weeks to rewrite the entire script. So I was like, oh, you just mean the first episode? And they're like, no, no, whole of series one. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's Comment. fine. Comment on... Yeah, they're just like, totally normal, I guess. right? Um, <laughs> and they got Jez Butterworth in and his brother Tom Butterworth, and obviously, like, I'm I'm obsessed with their work, and they're like theatre god, and yeah. you know, I was just like bow. And it turned out that Jez had actually come to watch me in the last theatre production that I did in 2015, and he'd come to see it and just really enjoyed it it was this tiny little role in mm. well it was a big role in a very small theater you know okay. it was barely anybody came to see it, but he turned up and he was like um so i'm rewriting the script i'm gonna do a whole new thing and they gave him the cast list and he goes i know that girl i i like her yeah i'm gonna do something with her <laughs> so like this made you the lead or the yeah literally like, like, like i turned up the next day and they're like how do you feel about being the lead and i was like well, I was wondering why you were sending me for like horse riding and archery and like, oh, all so these kind through. of lessons. They're like, we're well, just gonna send yeah. you to horse riding. Not gonna have to do it in the like, like, series, but it's like you're supposed to die. But like, do you know how to ride a horse? <laughs> do you know how to shoot a bow and arrow? And they were doing like all these warrior hairstyles on me. I was like, you know, I I'm in die, one scene, right? guys. Like, how are we gonna get all these costume changes like, in? What is going on? So. Yeah, that was that was a lot. So wow. they gave me no prep time. <laughs> but it's a very contemporary piece in the sense that like, you know, everybody talks as if, you know, it's happening today. We have David Morrissey as one of the Romans. It's like so we have a Scouse Roman, you know, it just, <laughs> it makes no sense. But like the whole series doesn't make sense. It's just so weird and wonderful and, and, and messed up. Wow. Yeah. Crazy wow. stuff. But yeah. It's why I love doing this podcast. I didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of that. It's why I love doing this. I did not know any. 
I thought you knew from the jump. Yeah, just straight you... in. <laughs> this is my rock. Nah, I wait. <laughs> wow. The table read, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. This is why we do this. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. I've got a question. Mm, okay. It's a question. I, for some reason, I haven't been asking it in the last two podcasts. Okay. But I feel like we're going to bring it back now. But I'm going to switch it up a little bit. It used to be a really <laughs> awful question. It used to be, what's your best attribute? It was an awful question. Ooh. I'm going to switch it up and say, what would you... Would you say you have a proudest moment in your career so far? Man. That is so difficult. That's, that's why I started it here. Because uh, you probably have so you see, many. You're asking the good <laughs> questions. Yes. You probably have so many. Okay, okay, okay. No, this is the thing because I know a lot of people will kind of go for oh, you know, whatever award or something like that. But I don't know. I think for me, the proudest moment is when I've either overcome something that I just didn't think I could do or if I've kind of helped somebody along the way. Okay. Like I did um, I did a film called Gwen, which was like really like it is bleak. It is so bleak. And we, we had a very limited time to shoot and a limited budget and everybody was just working night and day. Like we were doing night shoots where it was like three o'clock in the morning on the top of a hill in Snowdonia and it's like a literal blizzard. And I'm looking at the director like, we're about to do this on me. And he's going like, yep. And I just walk outside in a Victorian nightgown with a, like a flaming lantern and that's it. Like that's all I got, just the Victorian nightgown. There ain't no thermals. We don't have a budget for thermals. So, I, you know, just walking out in a blizzard and doing that. Or, you know, I got over my fear of, I don't have a fear of heights, but I have a fear of edges. And in series two of Britannia, I had to wear a pair of wings and prepare to throw myself off a cliff. And I got over my fear pretty quick when you're looking over the edge of a cliff or a waterfall and you're just like, yep, that's, that's that. I've been buried alive. And I was like, yep, that's that fear ticked off the list. And then it just, Mm-hmm. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Once again, rewind. Wait, Ten seconds. You have once been buried alive. Mm-hmm. That was series one of Britannia. Nice. And it was it was minus seventeen. It was snowing. We were in the middle of nowhere in the Czech Republic. Like I couldn't even tell you where we were. And yeah, there was so much snow they kept having to like dig the snow off the like freshly laid out <laughs> shallow grave I've been put in and I had this oh it was gross it was like mud and um like cocoa pops crushed and like um delicious it, right, it was it sounds should have been tasty but there was great. mud up my nose it was oh, we were talking about that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a like, child's dream being buried in cocoa pops that's brilliant so, yeah just give it put some milk in here and we're good <laughs> 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 oh but like you know there's I, there's little things like that or you know being able to help somebody else like if somebody's not done a job before and I can kind of sit down with them and be like hey I know what you're going through I know how stressed you are right now but like here's yeah. some coping mechanisms like that it does help that it really from be, does from being in that position of the person that is like shaking like mm. oh, I don't know dude, to have somebody that, that just like sits you down and be like you're gonna be fine, fine. it does help a lot exactly. I'll tell you right now it does because I didn't really have that like my first my first job on camera like I was just winging it with mm. Matilda like that was theatre it's a whole different ball game but like my first job after Matilda was literally weeks after I'd finished and it was Maleficent like the, the Disney film <laughs> and they were literally like see, you see when I said you... I didn't know where to start with this girl there's probably so much that I missed out and I'm so sorry like, I honestly forget oh what you've done God. so much but that was a, that was a tiny role like I am on screen for like ten, it's it's a blinking. I'm gonna put a link to her IMDb in the description, <laughs> and you look and you look and go and see for yourself in it because it's mad. It's honestly oh. mad. It's nuts. It's no, mad. No, it's but it was silly because I turn up, and of course everybody's just like you know, they expect everybody to be super professional on a job like that, and then yeah. it's just like freshly turned eleven year old me walking in there like <laughs> I'm gonna be a Disney princess. There's nothing <laughs> to this, and then I was like, oh my god, this is this is really scary. They've got like a camera looking at me and oh my God, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. That was the only thing I knew. I literally, I, all I knew was don't look at the camera. That was the one thing I went on to set with and I was terrified. You'd be surprised how many people forget that. I 
still do that now. Billy knows. <laughs> <laughs> Billy knows. Do I don't know how, but oh, it happened. Oh, man. It but happened. it does, it does. If it's in your eye line. Like, I've been in the middle of really intense scenes before, and I've been like, sorry, can we just, can we just do that again? <laughs> I, I, I just straight it. down the barrel. Because when you glimpse it, then you kind of look back to see if you And you would be like, have they noticed that I've done that? Do that? Like, can they look at their camera up like, do you notice me looking into the barrel? Uh. Staring down the DOP like... <laughs> Cut it out, cut it cut out, it, cut, cut it out, don't do that. Oh, oh man. Oh god, my favourite is just before you go for a take and like everybody's, you know, doing their, doing their bits and pieces and you're, you're just talking into your mic like, hi, to whoever is editing this, can you just make me look like really good please? Like guys, <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, I'm 5'8 I'm and the actor I'm working with is 6'4. Yeah. So if there's a way where like, I can look like I'm, <laughs> let's push 6'1, it'll be highly appreciated. <laughs> By the way, it never happens. Never, it, oh, never, never. it never happens. Never. It never happens. Oh, my, listen. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm pushing five four. Like this is this is like an actor saying that they're pushing five four. So let's just let's work from there. And I have had to do so many scenes where it's like, okay, so you're gonna have to get with this guy, but you're you're too, and I'm like short. <laughs> Are you sure? Just come out with it. So I had to wear, and I'm not even kidding. I, for for Britannia, you know, it's 43 AD period costumes, which are you know just uh, it's it's not exactly the best costume. Listen, those costumes are amazing, but they're not exactly flattering. That's how I'm gonna put it. And then after that, I had to wear buffaloes. You know the massive like 90s looking buffalo trainers <laughs> because I was so short. I, lo- I love this. Like, get Google up. Google buffalo. So imagine me in Spelt rags, buffalo, like... Bu- just I think that's it. Am I... S- buffalo what? shoes. What if I'm not saying this right? <laughs> Platform trainers. Like... Oh, like those. Get, 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 get those are the ones. Oh, people wear those now at like the feeder like construction boots. Right? Oh, yeah, people wear those. <laughs> So imagine me like in rags and literally. <laughs> You're talking about these trainers. That they're disgusting. Are you people that wear them right now? No, but like imagine me in rags oh with, my God. with those on my feet. Like no. Yes. <laughs> like oh also when God. you're in a forest and they're covered in mud and leaves, they are not okay. Like they just they just look like oh <laughs> it looked like I was wearing bricks on my feet. It's not okay. It was I guarantee that or heels. You, I know someone wearing those right this minute. Right I guarantee the, the pink feeler ones. I know. Oh, you the, know what I'm talking about. See, I, see that I can get behind, but the buffaloes are like such a nineties. Okay, like, fair, fair, fair. I was, I literally, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm giving Spice Girl from like, <laughs> from like the early days. <laughs> Forty three AD Spice Girl. Forty three AD baby Spice. That was it. <laughs> Oh man, but that's the problem. It's like you gotta, you gotta balance things out. You gotta do what you gotta do. Thank you very much, young lady. Thank you for coming on. It's always a pleasure. Oh my god. Um, Please let the people know where they can find you: Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want. Feels yours. This is this is where I start to embarrass myself because I'm really bad with social media. But I'm l underscore wc on Instagram, and I do have a TikTok with the same handle, but I never go on there. I'm gonna plug it anyway. I'm gonna plug it anyway. I'm gonna plug it anyway. I'm just gonna put that in there. But yeah, that's me. That's me. Well then, thank you people for tuning in again. Um, Again, there'll be a full audio on Spotify, so if you wanna watch it, you can go and listen to all of it. Um, Once again, thank you Ellie for your time. Thank you my guy Billy for your time. Thank you guys for watching. Um, We'll see you next time. You actually get buried alive. I genuinely got buried like, alive. Physically, like physically, like physically. So they they wrapped me, um, like so I'm claustrophobic anyway. But they literally wrapped me in like this uh, animal skin, so I couldn't move. And then they literally buried me alive. They had um, they had like a thin reed in my mouth. Like it was supposed to be a straw, but it was basically just you, like you could not a pay, reed. You couldn't pay me enough. <laughs>
<laughs> and we like, walk on set and say, I'm not getting paid. Today, imagine looking at on the call sheet going, oh yeah, by the way, t- on today's we're going to bury, bro, no. Like, bro. no, thank you. I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm just going to pass on that today. You must be not if you ever <gasps> think you're going to bury me alive. Like, it was bad. You better CGI that. Oh, man. Or something. Well, Christ. No, for real. <laughs> like, this is CGI. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they just put me under here. 